You know, a lot of times we want to put up a front and seem stronger than what we really are. But it's okay just to let the Lord know, be real with God and say, God, I don't know. I'm in over my head. I don't know what I'm doing, but I know you know the way. And he'll meet you right where you are. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Well, once again, I'm, I'm as always privileged to be able to share the word tonight, to be able to share with us uh, what, what I feel like the Lord is saying to us tonight. And I want to challenge us by making us aware or reminding us of something that we ought to be doing as Christians or everybody as a so-called Christian or believer uh, that sadly many today either don't do it or they can't remember the last time they did it. And when they did it, I don't know if it was truly, if it was for real, like the people say, I'm for real, for real, or honestly or genuine or sincere. And I'm not talking about prayer, although prayer is important. Prayer is obviously something that we ought to be doing, but this is something else, and I'll get into it here in a minute. We know that today, in this day and hour, we live in a selfish world, and the Bible says that it's only going to get worse because the Bible says that men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. We know we're there. We live in a world where most people, what they want is attention. That's part of that selfish nature. They want attention. They want to be seen. They want to be put up on a pedestal. They want to be lifted up. Want to look better than everybody else. Don't want to show any weakness. Don't want to show anything, you know, no humbleness. Just want to be self-made, whatever the case may be. If somebody's not that way, then for the young people, most of them, what most people want that are the younger generation is to go viral. They want attention in that sense. They want to go viral. They want their video to be seen. They want to get the most likes. They want it to get as to many people as they can, whatever they're trying to portray. Worse to me than people like that that are trying to go viral for attention and stuff is people that give them the attention, people that listen to what they have to say, people that fall for whatever tricks they have or whatever stuff that they do, you know, just all, all kind of stuff that people try. You know, I'm going to eat a poisonous frog for views. I'm going to, you know, jump off a cliff for attention, you know, or for whatever the case is and the people that actually do it. You got these people that show videos of themselves or crying. I saw one recently about a, uh, I, guess, I guess she was a, a, a single mother baking a cake for herself and this and that and showing herself crying and bawling and this and that. Man, it, they didn't have that social media back then. She's not the only single mother that's dealing with that kind of stuff. There's been other single mothers before in worse situations. And if I'm really having fun, I, I don't have time to be telling everybody how much fun I'm having. I'm having fun. I'm having a good time. I'll tell you about it later. I don't have time to take my phone out and show you and and, you know, take, do, do this and that and the other. I'm having a good time. I don't have time for that. And so just different little things that happen. And it's just laying the groundwork for the message, what I'm going to talk about. And, you know, social media has ruined individuality. I know I'm not, you know, people want to say, you know, be who you are, this and that. But they're programming and reprogramming people to think a certain way, to run as a herd because, of the pressure it puts on old people, older people, and young people, mostly the young people, to conform to what they say is the standard. I still don't know who they is. If you find out who they is, let me know who they is, because I don't know who they is. But I know that they has a lot of influence, because whatever they say goes, supposedly. If they say these are the shoes to wear, then those are the shoes to wear. And if you wear something else then you're, you're, just not it, you're just not them. If they say, you know, putting trash bags over these shoes make you look a certain way, make you look cool or whatever, then that's what goes. And if you wear anything different, then you're out. If they say having a certain type of gadget or phone is what's in and you have something else, something totally different, then guess what? You're out. I still don't know who they is, but they have a lot of influence. Kids do it. Do it all the time in school, whether they're elementary, junior high, high school. They will sure let you know if you're not in the end or if you're not what they say you're supposed to have or be. If you don't have the latest phone or gadget, they'll sure to be let you know, hey, 
that's outdated, or hey, this ain't the thing anymore, or hey, you know, you're, you're whatever the case is. But worse than that is adults. They're the same way. The same way that do it too. This can cause and is causing a lot of anxiety and depression in people when they begin to listen to they and whoever sets the standard to say you have to look a certain way, you have to, your church has to be a certain way, your church has to have certain members, your family has to look a certain way, you have to live in a certain home, you have to live in a certain neighborhood, you have to have certain things, you got to make a certain salary a year, you have to have a certain amount of kids, you have to do this, all this pressure and all this stuff from they, whoever they is, that keeps telling you this is the standard, this is what you should be doing. This is the way you should be living. This is the way you should be. Uh, this is how you should be. When are we going to teach our children as adults to grow some backbone and to stop worrying about who they is? To teach our kids to grow some backbone and to set some boundaries and to say, hey, look, this is the way it's in my house. This is the way it's in the word of God. I don't care who they is. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the teacher says. If it's not lining up to the word of God, this is the standard that we live by. When are we going to grow a backbone as adults to be able to walk in that job, to be able to walk in that situation and say, I don't care who they is, what kind of job, what kind of house I'm supposed to have. God has given me what I have. He's given me my job. He's given me my family. I'm happy about with what I got, and I have enough backbone to go against the river, to go against the grain, not to follow who they is. Sadly, so many in the church as well, preachers with no identity today, they don't know who they are. They're one person this year. Next year, there'll be something else. They're dressed one way one week. The next week, they're dressed another way. One year, they're dressed. They're preaching this one year. The next year, they're preaching something else because they don't know who they are because they're letting they dictate what they do. They're letting the they, they're letting the, the, whatever the standard says it's supposed to be, tell them what it is. You got to have this type of lighting. You got to have this type of uh, sound machine. You got to have this type of choir. You got to have this type of singer. You got to have this type of look. If you don't have any of this, then you're nothing. When are people going to grow some backbone and say, I'm going to be what God's called me to be? I don't care what everybody else is doing. God, I need to know what you want me to do in this day and age that I'm living in. To look not to the left nor to the right, but to look ahead to the prize that's set before us. I heard a man say, do what you're assigned to do, not what you are assumed to do. Do what you are assigned to do, not what you are assumed to do. So many people have assumptions of what you should be doing. But is that what God assigned you to do? Is that God's assignment for your life? So many people had assumed my life the way it was going to be, but that wasn't God's assignment for my life. People already had their life planned out. For me, what they thought I should be, what they, who they think I should marry, whatever the case is, but that's not what God had assigned for me. Yeah, I could have went with the assumption. I could have went with the status quo. I could have went with whatever they said, but I chose to go with what God wanted me to do, the assignment. So what I'm going to share is very important, and it's a vital part of this walk of faith. And the younger we are in being conscious of this, the younger we are and being conscious of what I'm about to share, the better we're going to be in life as we continue to grow in the Lord and as we continue just to grow, just to mature. I know a lot may be thinking prayer. I said I'm not, prayer is an important thing, but I'm going a different way today. A lot of people may be wondering, okay, get on with it. Just say it. Well, I'm building it up. Hang on. I want you to be thinking about what it is that I'm about to share. On my way to church this morning, the Lord dropped the scripture in my heart. We're going to read it in a minute. Not yet. <laughs> David wrote it. That's a hint. David was the author. He wrote this. It was a psalm. I'm not telling you what psalm yet. But we know that David was a man after God's own heart. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. David was a worshiper. He knew how to worship. He knew what it was to worship. He knew what it was to take orders. He knew what it was to obey and listen to his father. David was able to write songs. Not only was he able to write songs, but he was able to sing songs. He was a singer. He played instruments. He played the harp. 
Evidently, he was anointed. He was anointed of God because we knew that when Saul had that spirit that used to trouble him and torment him, he used to like when David sang because of the anointing that David had in his life. We know that David was excited about God in the presence of God. We know that David danced before the Lord. When the Ark of the Covenant was coming back, David was excited. He danced before the Lord in front of the people. When he danced, the Bible says that even one of his wives was upset looking at him like, what's he doing? Why is he looking so crazy dancing before the Lord? But David wasn't doing it for attention. David wasn't doing it to go viral. David wasn't doing it to start a trend and to show people his devotion. But David was doing that of pure joy and admiration to the presence of God. That's the reason why he was the way he was and again at the beginning what David did what David had to remind himself to do is what I want us to be aware for us to do if we haven't done so if you've done it even this morning that's great awesome David had to remind himself of this what is it brother Paul get on to it let's go what's the bottom line and that's the title for tonight bless the Lord Bless the Lord. Psalm 103, verse 1 through verse 5. A psalm of David. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with love and kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Go back to verse 1, brother. It says, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. If a man like David, who was a man after God's own heart, if a man like David, who worshiped, a man like David who was intimate with the Lord, even though he was not perfect, he had his flaws, he had his shortcomings, but he repented and he was humble before the Lord. Again, a, God, a man after God's own heart. If a man like that had to stop and tell himself, remind himself to bless the Lord, then how much do me and you need to do that? How much do we need to stop and think, to stop and tell ourselves, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and not just a quick little bless, but with everything that's within me, with all of my strength, with all of my heart, with all of my being, with every fiber of my body. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless his holy name. If a man had to stop and remind himself, why don't we? When you think rightly about God, when you put God in the right place, in the rightful place in your life, when you think rightly about him, not according to what others say, not according to just what the preacher says, but when you see who God is through his word, when you see who God is through the experience, through your testimony, all that is within you is going to bless him. When you experience God in a special way, when you know the King of kings and Lord of lords, all that is within you is going to bless him. It's going to happen. It's going to be a burst. However it is, it's going to happen. It's going to bless the Lord. And in turn, as you bless the Lord, this will bless you. If your life, if our life had more praise, it wouldn't feel so gloomy. It wouldn't feel so mundane. If our life was filled with praise, if our life was filled with thanksgiving, if our life was filled with blessing the Lord, it wouldn't feel so ugly, it wouldn't feel so boring, it wouldn't feel so mundane, it wouldn't feel so messed up because we're too busy praising the Lord, we're too busy blessing the Lord. I'm not looking at what others have, I'm not looking at what so-and-so did, I'm not looking at their vacation, I'm not looking at anything, I'm looking at one man and it's God, one person and it's God and I'm busy because I'm blessing the Lord and praising him for what he's doing in my life who are we praising who or what is the object of our praise it should be God God the living God the living not some idol not something made out of stone or something made out of wood but God the living that's who we're praising not God the imagined not the God that I can make today and if I get mad at him I'll throw him away and make a new one? 
God the present. God that's here, Emmanuel, God with us. Not some God that's far away somewhere that can't come when we need him, when we call upon his name, that's thousands and thousands of miles and galaxies away where he can't get to us when we need him. It's God the present. God who's near. Not just some God that doesn't care, but it's a God who cares. It's a God who hears us. It's a God who loves us. It's a God who listens. It's a God who created you and created all things. Do we stop and think about that? That God listens? That God cares? If you don't get to that level, then I don't know what you're doing. When you realize that God cares, that God listens, when you consciously begin to think and talk to God and know every time I speak, every time I'm talking, God is listening. I'm not some mystic person. I'm not somebody that's out there worshiping trees and stuff. But when you go out there in creation, how can you not look at creation and look at the beauty and hear the birds and hear the clouds? I mean, see the clouds and hear the animals and look at the water and look at the mountains and look at the trees and not say there is a God out there who created these things. But more than that, I know him and he knows me you look at the stars you enjoy the beauty of it not here by some chance by some random something just blew up and exploded and we're here to know that there is a God out there I know we can't live with our head in our clouds all day every day but it's okay to go there every now and then it's okay to be there every now and then to visit to thank the Lord, to talk, to talk about him. David in this psalm had reason just like we do. He, he had reason to shake himself. It's like when you read it, he's like, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And then verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. It's like he was trying to shake himself. Kind of like when you're driving and you're falling asleep and you're trying to shake yourself. Come on, wake up. Wake up, you slap yourself or you, or you scream or whatever you do. You roll the windows down. You turn the AC up, hot, cold, whatever you do to stay awake. You're trying to shake yourself awake. You're trying to make yourself aware of what's going on, aware about the road and everything that can happen. It's like David was trying to shake himself and talk to himself. The reason why he was trying to praise, the reason why he said bless the Lord is because he was living in a shower of the blessings of God. They were so constant. It's almost like he just didn't even realize how blessed he was. And he had to look around and he says, I need to stop and look around before I forget the blessings that God has for me. I need to stop and look around. It's simple things that we take for granted. Simple things. Simple things like hugging our loved ones. Simple things like kissing our loved ones on the cheek and saying, I love you. Simple things like being able to wake up to your spouse. Simple things like being able to see your kids grow up. Simple things. Nothing fancy. Simple things like being able to go out as a family and have a good time, to go out to eat or to go out to do, to see people graduate, to see life go on. The things in life where you have your father still, your mother still that you can talk to, that you can call. If you need advice, if you need help, just to hear their voice one more time, just to hear them say, I'm here for you. Simple things, the blessings that God puts in our life, that if we don't look at them, we tend to forget about those things, how accessible they are because we're looking at other places and we're looking at everybody, everywhere else and everything else. But the blessings and the things that God has given us are right in front of our face. And he's got to remind himself and look and say, man, I don't want to forget this. I don't, I don't want to forget these things. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, everything, with the whole soul, with, the, with, the, with intellect, imagination, with your conscience, with your heart, with your mind, with your body, with everything, all these should praise God and come out and praise the Lord. It's just more than just lip service. It's a conscious thinking about it. It's your deep inner being. Something on the inside that says, God, I, I, I feel like I've, I've given you everything I could, but if there's more than I can give, what is there more than I can give? Part of myself, something, God, to bless you, something to, to give you praise, just anything, God, just from the inside. You see a man here that's talking to himself, a soul talking to his soul. 
thinking about deep stuff. He's telling himself, man, you need to bless the Lord. You need to praise the Lord. You need to do it with everything that's in you. All that is within me, with all of your strength, with all of your time, with all of your energy, on purpose, with effort. What does the Bible say? That he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Most people don't believe he is. How many people truly kneel down and pray and when they do they feel like, okay, I'm, I'm talking to God. How many people are truly conscious that he is everywhere? It's something that's got to be here and here, and it's all got to be connected. Nothing the book can teach you. It's a desire that you got to have. It's a desire within you that even if there's a little bitty flame, if you begin to pursue it, God will let it grow inside you. Something that you just want to say, God, if, if you're out there, I want to know you. I want to know who you are and everything about you. And then it begins to grow and you begin to want to praise him. And then with everything, you stir that memory of what God's done in your life. Remind yourself of where God has brought you from. Remind yourself of his goodness and the dangers, the, the, the bullets, if you want to say, to use that term metaphorically, that you dodged because the Lord was faithful to warn you in different things. The psalmist David goes on to say, forget not all of his benefits. He's reminding, recollecting what God has done as we aren't to, supposed to be doing, as we need to do. We need to remind ourselves about what he's done and what he's going to do and where he's brought us from. It's okay to sit down in a porch sometimes. It's okay to lay down in a bed sometimes. It's okay to take a drive sometimes and begin to think about what God has done. I know it's a different valley. I know it's a new mountain to climb. I know it's a new challenge. I know it's a new struggle. But it helps a lot when you remind yourself of what God has brought you from. I know it helps a lot when you begin to thank God and praise God for what he's going to do, for what he's done, because if he did it before, he will. He'll do it again. But it takes part. That takes action on our part. You got to shake yourself and you got to remind yourself to do it. When you don't want to do it, you got to tell yourself to do it. You got to drag yourself to do it. If you don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. If you don't talk to yourself, if you got a made up mind that you're not going to do it, then you're done. He sure is not going to force you to do anything. So he's trying to shake himself. He's trying to talk to himself. Remind himself of the mercies of God. To bless God will be and is medicine for our soul. When we bless God, it keeps us in check. We cannot bless God and at the same time idolize ourselves. I can't bless God and idolize myself. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Martha is running around doing this and doing that. We know the story of Mary and Martha. She's running, getting dishes ready, getting stuff ready. Jesus is at the house, and Mary is at the feet of Jesus. Martha's upset. Jesus, you see I'm running around doing all this stuff, and Mary, all she's doing is laying at your feet. Well, he rebuked her. He said she's doing the right thing. She's doing the right thing. She's here. She's blessing me. She's, she's taking advantage of this opportunity. Martha's probably trying to see who can stack the most dishes, who gets the table better, who fixed the plate for Jesus better. Let me see. Let me do this right here. Let me, let, so I can look good. Jesus is going to say, well done, Martha. Mary didn't do anything. Mary was lazy, but you did everything. Here you go. First prize. Uh, you know, Martha's running around trying to show off and trying to do this and that, and Jesus is like, I'm not worried about those things. You worship me. You look to me. To bless God and to praise keeps us from being envious of others. For by blessing God for all that we have, listen, by blessing God for all that we have, we learn to bless God for what other people have. When we bless God for all that we have, 
We are able to bless God for what other people have. That will save people a lot of heartache. Just got me a new truck. I'm thankful for it. Thank the Lord for it. My brother here, let's say he gets one better, higher package, better trim level. Well, bless God. God bless me. I'm glad he blessed you. Man, that's great. It was everything I had to get this truck, but I'm so proud of it because the Lord blessed me with it. The Lord gave me this. You know, however it happened, the boat, the house, whatever, you know, I'm able to get in the neighborhood finally, a good neighborhood. You know, it's not a big house. Don't have three garages. Don't have, you know, a pool and all this stuff. But you do, okay, pray, bless God. Thank the Lord. But I thank the Lord for what he's brought me from. Because when I grew up, I didn't have any of these things. You understand? When you begin to bless God, when you begin to bless the Lord, that will save you a lot of trouble. Save you a lot of trouble. Where all that other stuff doesn't faze you anymore. What you have is what you have, and I thank God for it. What I have is what I have, and I thank God for it. This is what the word, the word the Lord gave me. I'm just throwing water out there. It splashes who it splashes. But I'm telling you, that is the key. You bless God. You begin to bless God. And your life will begin to change. That's why I said, young people, you begin to do this at a young age. Blessing God and praising God is also useful because it helps in, in witnessing to other people. It helps in winning souls. Because it's like honey. You're not going to catch bugs with vinegar. You're going to catch bugs with honey. Praising the Lord. Tonight you may say, well, I know how to praise. I know how to give thanks. But how can I bless God? I know how to praise. I know how to give thanks. I know how to thank the Lord. I know, Lord, thank you, and I am thankful. But how can I bless God? When you're talking about bless the Lord and praise the Lord, what's the difference? How can I bless God? I, I thought we just praised this morning. I thought we just praised just a little while ago. I praised them in the car. But how do I bless God? I praised them on my way to church. He just did a great testimony for me. He just, he just came through in a special way, and I praised him for it, and I thanked him for it. But how can I bless God? You may be wondering, how can I bless God? Well, I got a few things the Lord gave me. How can I bless God? Well, the Bible says that the Lord thinks good thoughts toward us. Amen? Thoughts of peace, thoughts of prosperity. To give us an expected end. He thinks well about us. The Bible says he thinks a lot, a, a lot about us all the time. He even knows the, the, the number of hairs we have in our head. We bless God by thinking about him. He thinks about us. Do we think about him? Or is he that escape ladder, that exit sign? We bless God by thinking about him. How many of you that are grandparents or parents that your children have gone and moved away are blessed when your children call or your grandchildren call and say, hey, I'm thinking about you? Does that bless you? I would imagine it does. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking for anything. I'll just let you know I was just thinking about you. The other day something happened and we laughed and I thought about you. Man, that's a blessing, I would think. When we think about the Lord, that blesses him. That blesses the Lord when you begin to think about him. Think deeply about what he's done over the mercies. Don't just look at him real quick, but think, look at him. Study him at what he's done in your life. About what he's, the everlasting faithfulness, about the blood that redeemed you, the pardon and the grace and all those things. We also bless God when we want what's best for his name and his kingdom. You know when somebody truly wishes you well, 
that blesses you. If somebody truly wishes you well and you know it, you know that it's from the bottom of their heart, look, I wish you nothing but the best for you and your family, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your job, for your home. I, I want the very best for you. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm in your corner. I truly wish it for you. I want you to succeed. I want you to prosper. I don't, I don't want you to fail. I want everything that you do to work out. If you know it's heartfelt, that blesses you, know. And when we are wanting the best for God's name and for his kingdom, when we begin to think, God, I want all men to know you, all people to know you. God, I wish that all people would learn how to worship you. God, I, I wish that my coworkers would get saved or, my, or the people that I go to school with would get saved. It turns more than just wishes. It becomes prayer. It becomes something that we begin to pray about. God, I, it, it's more than I wish that, that my class would get saved. I wish that my boss would get saved. Just thinking good things. I wish that your name would be proclaimed. It, it graduates from just wishing to all of a sudden you begin to pray. You begin to make it a matter of prayer and fasting and saying, God, I'm doing this for you, for your kingdom, for your glory. I want every person to know you. I don't want anybody to go to hell. I want people to know that you're a saving God, a redeeming God. I want people to know your goodness and your grace and your mercy, how good you you are God and it becomes more than just wishing well to praying about it to fasting about it because it concerns the glory of God little things that you don't have to do but you do it for his name picking up a piece of trash Lord I wouldn't do this for myself I wouldn't even bother to do this but if it's for you I'm doing it and I am doing it for you. It's little things like that that bless the Lord. You can bless God by testifying about him. Have you said anything to praise God today to anybody? Again, you think about you, when you hear somebody you care about, somebody that you love saying good things about you, not puffing you up, not just saying stuff just to, you know, just to butter you up, but it's something real. It blesses you. It blesses you. They're not trying to butter you up for whatever or glaze you like the young people say. They're not trying to glaze you. It's just the reality. You bless his name by the things that you do, by how you do it. Again, let's say your kids, think about your kids who hardly say thank you. Your kids who don't hardly say thank you, they just expect everything, they want everything. You give them what you can, you give them all you can, and sometimes they're still wondering where's the rest. <laughs> But let's say you find out they used up all their money to buy you a gift. They worked all summer or they did all this to buy you a gift. Will that bless you? Because it's sacrificial. Father's Day's coming up. My boys, I'm expecting something. It'll bless me a lot. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, you know their limited resources. You know how much it's cost them, the thought they put into the gift. Whether it's a $10 gift, a 50-cent gift, whatever it was that they put into that, that blesses us. Whether it's a sock, a T-shirt, whatever the case is, how much more the Lord, when he knows in our limited understanding and thinking and resources, that we have done all we can to give him something. That blesses him. That's what we're talking about, blessing the Lord. This is David had to remind himself to do this, so we got to remind ourselves to do this, to bless the Lord. There's a lot of ways to bless the Lord. Now, I'm almost done. I'm not going to be long. It's just a quick thought. It's not only what you bring, but in what spirit you bring it. The widow with the two mites, that's all she had. 
And she blessed Jesus. Didn't she bless Jesus? She gave all she had. And she blessed him. Well, all the Pharisees and everybody else is throwing all their stuff. All she's got is two mites. But the spirit she brought it in, the sacrifice, what she did, she blessed him. He stopped and he looked and he pointed her out and he said, look, that's who you want to be like. That's what blesses me. It's not the flashiness. It's not what they say you need to do. It's not what they say you need to give. It's not what they say you need to look like. It's not what they say you need to pray. It's something that comes from the heart. It says, God, here I am. Here's everything I got. I want to bless you. You've blessed me. I want to bless you. The text He says it not once but twice. He keeps saying, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless his holy name. In the next verse, he says, bless the Lord again. He keeps saying, bless the Lord. There's three psalms. We're not going to read them all, but there's three psalms. There's 103. In Psalm 103, he's glorifying the God of grace. Psalm 104, he's glorifying the God of nature. In Psalm 105, he's glorifying the God of history. He realizes and he sees who God is. God, you're the God of grace. God, you're the God of nature. God, you're the God of history, where we've come from, how you delivered us. When we were slaves and all the kind of stuff, how the Hebrews were slaves, everything. And they're all rich with praise. So tonight the challenge is that, simply that. To bless the Lord, to think about him. To think about what he's done. To thank him for what he's done, but to find ways That you can bless them in the everyday life. To remind yourself like David did to bless the Lord. To realize that he's not just some God out there that doesn't care. That he cares. That he can come down. That he can listen. That he can talk to you. That he can walk with you. I don't know in this day and age. I don't know if it's because we're in America and America's different. But the reason people see miracles in other countries is because they have that inside of them. I don't know what it is. Maybe because they don't have as much technology that they believe and they see and they sense that there is a God. That there is much more to this world than just what I physically see. There is a spiritual out there. There is more out there than I can just. There is more than just my five senses or six senses. There, there, there's more out there for me. That God has. It's not this crazy limbo stuff, but it's the God of heaven. It's the God that listens. It's the God who answers prayer. It's the God who sees everything. And the reason I do what I do and I act the way I act is because I believe that he's real. That's why. That's why I go to church. Because I know he's real. Not because somebody expects me to go to church. That's why. That's why I dress the way I dress. Because I believe And being right and modest, not because somebody just expects me to do it. I'm doing it because I'm doing it for the Lord. The reason I do things is for the Lord. So many people do stuff because it's expected of them. They don't even believe it themselves. Because they, because they're going to say something. They, 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 always worried about they. I'm worried about him. I'm going to invite you to stand as Bethany comes. We're going to worship the Lord. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord today. I'm going to close. We're going to sing a few songs. We all know them, I'm sure. And I just want you to praise the Lord. I want you to bless the Lord. I want you to think about the Lord, who he is. Remind yourself. Shake yourself. It's something that we need to do in our lives. And when you go home today, those little blessings that you have that you've overlooked, tell that person you love them. Hug that person tight. Tell them. Tell them tonight. Tell that person that you love, you love them.
It's very important. Don't waste time. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Do it tonight. And I'm not saying something bad is going to happen. You know, don't take me that way. I'm just saying I, I feel strongly that somebody here, if not all of us here, we need to tell those people before the sun goes down, I love you. It's a blessing from God. If your parents are still here, if your mom and dad are still here, tell them you love them. If your wife is still here, if your husband's still here, tell them you love them. All your children. You may not have any of these people, but there's maybe somebody special in your life. Tell them you love them. If you can, hug them. Hug them. Hug them. It's important. I feel very strongly about this. If I've ever felt anything. I don't know who you are. But you need to do this before the sun. You need to do this before you go to sleep. You need to do this before you go to sleep. Amen. We're going we're gonna to sing these songs, and you can come pray. You can sing with us, and then we'll close. Amen.